Sometimes milling can be my favorite part of a build, and with these eight quarter boards, it can also be hard work. I always start at the miter saw and trim the boards to a rough length. This table is going to be 60 inches long, so I made these about 65 inches depending on knots. From there I run the one face side on the jointer, and then that side up against the jointer fence, I create a perfect 90 degree angle. After that's complete, I move on to the thickness planer. There this machine referencing that flat side, I make the other face flat and parallel to the first. Once all the boards are the same thickness, I take them all to the table saw and rip the last side square. This milling process is like a little dance moving throughout my shop, and it is what sets each project up for success, starting with them nice, flat, square stock. After milling, it is time to glue up the tabletop. My Pony Cabinet Master clamps make a perfect platform for the top. I then arrange the boards in an order that looks good and gives me the tightest joints, all while paying attention to grain direction. Then a deep breath and I start spreading the glue. I like to use Type On 3 on my tabletops because it's rated for exterior use, so any occasional spills will be no match for it. After that, I add more clamps to keep everything in place until the glue dries, generally overnight. The next day, once the tabletop is out of clamps, I scrape any excess glue that I didn't get the day before, and then we're going to be flipping the tabletop over and scraping all that glue that was on the bottom side of the clamps that we didn't get to the day before. Super satisfying process. Then we trim up the ends. Remember we made this a little bit bigger. We wanted a 60 inch long piece. So we have to trim off that excess about five inches. So a couple inches on each side to give us a square tabletop. Since I'm making this table out of knotty alder, there's, you guessed it, lots of knots in it. So on the bottom side of it, we are adding some Tyvek tape uh, to over each hole, and then we're gonna flip the tabletop over and pour in some epoxy. I'm using Total Bolt's high performance two to one epoxy, just mixing that up per the instructions, and we're gonna be dumping that into each knot until they get full. Sometimes this process does take um, a couple of tries if the knots are really big. So you just pour it in, let it dry, and then pour it in until they're completely full. Oh, and it's so fun to pop any air bubbles, which you'll want to do with, um, I'm using a little butane torch. So when you sand it, you won't have little air bubble holes that come through. And then you just sand down the epoxy, remove that tape on the underside, and get your tabletop prepared for sanding and sealing. Now onto the base of this table. We are making this a counter height table and we're gonna make these legs chunky. In order to make them chunky, we're taking two pieces of eight quarter knotty alder and we're gonna glue those together. I did run them through the planer on the face sides to make sure that they were perfectly flat and then put glue all over them and clamped them together. I did this for the legs, for the stretchers, um, for the whole underneath base part. Once those were dry, it was time to take them out of clamps and go through that whole entire milling process again. Through the jointer on the face side and the edge side. Then through the planer until we got them all to the same thickness. And then finally, we're ripping them to the width at the table saw. These were really chunky and it barely fit. I could have done this in two passes or flipped them over, but this ended up working. Put a little wedge there so it didn't have tension on the blade and then ran those pieces back through the planer to make sure, clean up any um, saw marks on them. The last step for the base was to cut all of those pieces that we just milled to their length. For the legs, since this is counter height, we're going to 34 and a half inches because the top will be an inch and a half. And then once we get all those pieces cut out, before assembling a base, I always like to give it a, a good sanding because it's so much easier to sand now than when everything's put together. 
And for joinery for the base, we're gonna be using pocket holes. I'm using my Craig 320 pocket hole jig here and just drilling in one and a half inch pocket holes. And then we're gonna be using two and one half inch pocket hole screws and wood glue to join everything together. Lots and lots of pocket holes. I did place them in a way that they're not gonna be able to be seen once the table's together. So they're all either facing inward or downward. I do love this Craig track that I have on my assembly or workbench. Um, it makes holding things down super easy. I did add an extra pony clamp there to hold everything. It wasn't going anywhere while I drove those screws into place. Then you can see I use a straw to help me get rid of some of that excess glue. And then for the bottom stretcher pieces, I did cut a uh, scrap piece to give me the right height to place that on, on both sides. And again, use that clamp to hold it in place while I drove those screws in. And after driving those last few screws into the base and it was assembled, I always like to add feet levelers to my pieces. You never know if a client's floor is level or not, if they have chunky tile. So I do add a recess hold using a Forstner bit and then follow the instructions on the feet leveler, add about a one inch hole down in there. Then you tap in their little nut thingy I don't know what you call that, sorry. And then you just screw in the feet leveler and that way if they don't really need it, it would be hidden. But if they do need it, they can just untwist it down. Then I'm, after sanding the base, I went ahead and cleaned it off with some mineral spirits and I'm finishing it with Rubio Monaco in a cotton white color. I love this finish because all you have to do is wipe it on and wipe it off. And it gives you color as well as protection all in one step. Then to attach the tabletop to the base, I am uh, putting in some biscuit holes with my biscuit joiner, and I'm gonna use Z-clips or tabletop fasteners to attach that once the tabletop is ready. So I'm using a 1 8 inch roundover bit on my trim router just to help with sanding and give it an even finish. And after finishing the bottom, I got some help from the hubby to flip it over and put it on its top or on its base. <laughs> and here are those tabletop fasteners. They're Z-clips. It's basically the ones, the flat part goes into the slot or the biscuit joint that we did and then the other part gets screwed into the top. So this allows for wood movement during seasonal humidity changes that might happen in your home. All right, now all that's left is to get the table, the top side of this tabletop finished. So again, we're gonna be rounding over the edges on this, using some pencil marks there to give it its final, final sand. Using Rubio Monaco, we only sand up to 150 grit. We need to have the pores in the wood open enough to accept the sealer. But you definitely wanna clean the wood. I'm cleaning mine here with mineral spirits. Let that dry. And then we can mix up our Rubio Monocoat. It's an oil wax based finish. So you add those two together. One's a hardener um, to make it dry faster for you. You just follow the instructions on the can. Mix it up and then we spread it. I'm spreading it here with, I think a credit card. And then that just gets you the product all over it. And then I'm using a white um, scrub pad to kind of push it into the pores and make sure that it gets everywhere. Once it is there, then you just wipe off any excess after you let it sit for a few minutes. And the cool thing about this is you can work in stages and you're not gonna get any sort of lap marks. So I did one side and then the other, and you'll notice there's no lap marks down the middle when I'm finished. Ruby 
Rubio Monaco is a matte finish. So to give this a little bit more sheen and a little bit extra protection for the family that's gonna be having this table, I added some of their maintenance oil onto the top part of the table. Not a necessarily necessary step, but just a little added extra protection and sheen. And just like that, we have an awesome counter height table ready for a family to make awesome memories around. Appreciate you guys watching. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and that you're subscribed to my channel. Remember, build loud, build wild, and have an awesome day.